Have you ever taken a casual walk down a city street or through your neighborhood and noticed small numbers, letters, or even full names stamped into the sidewalk? It's easy to overlook these seemingly random markings as just some form of wear or graffiti. But in fact, they often have a specific purpose and an interesting story behind them. These stamps are more than just visual clutter on the pavement. They're little time capsules, signatures, and legal records all rolled into one. In this video, we're diving into why concrete sidewalks have numbers or initials stamped into them, what they mean, who puts them there, and how they've evolved over time. Let's explore, right here, on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the most common type of stamp you might see, the contractor's mark. This is usually a set of initials, a company name or a logo stamped into the wet concrete right after it's been poured and finished. Think of it as the builder's signature, just like an artist signs a painting. The construction crew or contractor who poured the sidewalk often leaves their identifying mark in the concrete. This practice isn't just about pride and craftsmanship, though there's definitely some of that. It's also practical. These stamps serve as a permanent record of who was responsible for installing that specific section of sidewalk. If problems arise later, like premature cracking, shifting, or spalling, the city or property owner can trace it back to the contractor and hold them accountable, especially if the work falls within a warranty period. It's a subtle but important part of municipal record keeping. Another common set of markings you might notice are dates, either in full or abbreviated form. For example, you might see 1987 or something like 703 etched into the corner of a sidewalk slab. These dates usually indicate when that portion of sidewalk was installed or replaced. Cities and towns keep detailed infrastructure maintenance records, and a stamp date makes it easier to assess the age of the sidewalk without digging through paper records or digital archives. It helps city maintenance crews prioritize which sections of sidewalk are due for repair or replacement based on their age and condition. In colder climates, where freeze-thaw cycles can damage concrete over time, Knowing the age of a sidewalk is crucial for planning repairs and budgeting for future infrastructure needs. Sometimes, instead of numbers or letters, you might spot symbols, unique logos, or even decorative patterns. These can serve multiple functions. In some cases, they're still a form of contractor identification, but more artistic or stylized. In other instances, they reflect the city's branding or an effort to make public infrastructure a little more engaging and human. For example, a city might have a specific sidewalk stamp to mark a historic district, a pedestrian improvement project, or a community beautification effort. These marks tell a story not just about who built the sidewalk and when, but why it was built, under what program and as part of what broader civic initiative. There's also a legal and regulatory side to these sidewalk stamps that often goes unnoticed. In many cities, sidewalk construction is governed by strict municipal codes. Contractors are required to follow these codes to ensure sidewalks are safe, accessible, and long-lasting. Stamping the sidewalk with a company name or number creates a trail of responsibility and helps inspectors track compliance. In some cases, cities require contractors to use specific stamps approved by the local public works department. These can include a contractor ID number, a permit number, or other regulatory information. It's like putting a license plate on a piece of public infrastructure. It's about accountability and traceability. But it's not just city-approved contractors leaving their mark on sidewalks. In some places, you'll find more personal, informal inscriptions, 
kid's initials, little handprints, or messages like Joey was here 1999. These aren't part of any official program, but they're part of the charm and history of a neighborhood. Often, they're made spontaneously. Someone walks by while the concrete is still wet, sees an opportunity, and leaves their mark. Technically, this is considered vandalism, since it alters a piece of public infrastructure. But in practice, many of these marks go unpunished and even become cherished local landmarks. They give the sidewalk a bit of personality and a sense of human connection. Of course, contractors usually try to prevent this kind of interference. They might rope off fresh concrete or post signs asking people not to touch. Still, once in a while, someone gets through and their imprint becomes part of the sidewalk story. The practice of stamping sidewalks dates back over a century to the early 1900s and even before. In those days, urban development was booming and concrete became the material of choice for roads, sidewalks, and curbs due to its durability and low cost. As cities expanded, so did the need for better infrastructure documentation. Stamping concrete helped city engineers and maintenance crews manage the growing web of streets and sidewalks. Some of the oldest sidewalk stamps still visible today are fascinating artifacts of urban history. You might find century-old contractor names, long-defunct company logos, or installation dates from the 1910s and 1920s. In a way, these marks are a form of urban archaeology. Today, digital technology plays a bigger role in infrastructure management, with GIS mapping, QR codes, and barcode scanning making it easier to track when and where sidewalks are installed. But even in this high-tech age, sidewalk stamps remain a simple, effective, and surprisingly durable method of record-keeping. They don't rely on batteries, servers, or apps, just a quick press into wet concrete. And the information is there for decades, maybe even a century. It's one of the rare cases where old-school analog methods still hold strong in a digital world. So next time you're out for a walk, take a closer look at the sidewalk beneath your feet. You might be surprised by what you find. A cryptic set of initials could reveal who built that stretch of pavement 50 years ago. A date stamp might show how recently the city invested in your neighborhood's infrastructure. A tiny handprint could be someone's childhood memory captured forever in stone. These markings are more than just scratches in the surface. They're messages from the past, signposts of civic effort, and reminders that even the most ordinary parts of our built environment have stories to tell. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.